All right, all right. We're going to do a little bit of commentary for this match here. We have got an A side platinum singles match between Ben Renteria and Eric Sumakil. This is Patrick Nix commentating to you straight through the Evo Sports live stream platform. Players are running the live stream themselves. We're just popping in here for a little bit of commentary. Talk about the match. Keep you guys entertained, those of you watching out there. Ben Renteria, longtime player out of the Pacific Northwest. Not too familiar with Eric's game, but uh, this is Ben at the table right now. Trying to extend his one to nothing lead. So we started, I remember the first few few months I started streaming stuff. We're like, oh, let's put together a big money match at Simon Pickering and Tyler Eady. I remember that. Tyler Eady. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of the first ones. It was like maybe like... And I think he got a little bit stuck here. I don't think he can see this 14 ball, so he's going to try to come rail first and maybe try to get a little elevation and try to curve around and come off the rail here. But he's going to have to. He's going to have to do a little bit of a a swerve move on this, and it's either that or he's going to play the combo, which is look what he's looking at here, comboing the 15 into the 14. Yeah, Lido, Lido and Edwin played yesterday. I fucking do love it. But it's all good. No, I played like a schmuck. All of a sudden, in the middle of a match, I'm up 3-1. I fucking fall asleep. 15-14 combo coming up. I have a 10-ball straight in with the rack. Doesn't quite get it and leaves the 6-ball just hanging in the pocket. Uh, so that's going to give Eric an opportunity here. But Eric's going to have to get shape on that 8-ball, which means... The cue ball is going to have to end up in this position of the table after these two balls. So he's got to figure this out. I'm going to bring in my my co-commentator, Paul Comte. Welcome, Com Paul. Hello. All right, thanks for joining me in the booth today. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so this is a platinum A-side singles match. Okay. And Eric Sumakil is at the table right now. Looking to get two rail shape, maybe three rail shape on this eight ball. And he just misses it. He gets his shape, though. And that's going to, that, that might cost him here. Although he did, he did leave that ball really far down on the rail here. So not leaving Ben the easiest of shots on the 15 ball. And I think Ben could elect to play a safety and just move that 15 out and leave the cue ball where the 15 ball is right now. But, you know, when you when your opponent has a ball just hanging in the pocket like that, it's, um, you never really want to, he is going to play a safety here. He's going to leave the cue ball behind the 15, it looks like. That's what he's looking at. So, yeah, he doesn't really like the cut here because it's just dangerous. I know he can make it. I know he can make it. He knows he can make it, but it's it's a little more difficult than you want, and it definitely will sell out the rack if you don't make it. So he's playing a safety on the 14. This is a bit risky here because you could easily scratch. I don't like it, and I don't think he likes it either. Uh, not sure what he was looking to do there because he hit that fairly firm. Maybe he was looking at double kissing it and bringing the cue ball back to the 15-8, but that did not work at all. And Eric Sumakil is got gets a second chance at that position on the eight ball and wastes no time getting right down there to it. Oh, and... A complete miss on the eight ball. That's very surprising at the platinum level. That's a very surprising miss from Eric. And I know he's got to be frustrated because that is not one that you would expect him to miss players of this level. Uh, but it happens to all of us. Uh, but Ben is very happy that he's getting back to the table after his mistake on the safety. So two 
late game errors that were unexpected, one by each player. And the rack is going to go to Ben, looking like. And Eric Sumakil uh, came in off his first match. I believe he had a 6 nothing win in his first match. So uh, he shut out his opponent. Uh, this is, I believe, this is Ben's first match because I believe he uh, he had a bye in the first round. So let me, I'll check the bracket and clarify that for you. But let's take a look here at the bracket. Yeah, Eric Eric Sumakil defeated. Bob Kolash, 6-0 to zero at 9 a.m. this morning. And Ben Renteria had a first-round bye. Uh, so this is Ben's first match of the tournament and Eric's second. Yeah, 30-point Fargo difference between the two players. What do Roughly. we got? What do we got for Fargo's? You got my, I got my stats guy here. <laughs> Paul, what do we have for Fargo rates here? Uh, ben is a five seventy, out of Longview, Washington. Okay. And Eric is a six oh two out of Vancouver, Washington. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised to see Ben at five seventy. He used to be a six hundred. Uh, I so I played on a team with Ben back in 2019. We played in the nine ball event. Um, and I uh, believe he was right around 600 at the time. So he's gone down a bit. But uh, that might be just be due to, you know, not, not playing a lot. And, you know, I know he's been working. He's got a construction business. And this is Eric at the table now trying to make up for that mistake. Eric, no, not taking a ton of time. He just likes to get down and get to work. Nothing wrong with that. We call that a rhythm rhythm player. And some players just do best. Just getting down and shooting. All right. So I like here the six. I believe he's got the six or the five to choose from. Chooses the six. Let's see, six, three, four, five, eight to get out. Or do you? Oh no, you probably want no. You want to go four, three, five, eight because then it, it just gets you in that position, right? You got four, four here, three here, five here, and that brings the cue ball into this area at the end for your eight ball. That's what he's looking yeah. for. He overran his position. Now he's going to have to change that pattern up. He's going to have to. That's not the pattern that he wants. He wanted to be nice and straight on that three ball uh, because everything was in line to get out. Now he's got to work extra hard and oh, nice. puts a ton of spin on that ball to get it to pop back out. Uh, but you've got to be on the other side of the eight ball. That's that's the reason that that pattern was the way that it was, is you had to get to you know this side of the eight ball over here for shape. Yeah, he's got he's got some work there. Yeah, he's gonna have to he's gonna power draw this, or is he? No, he's going top and gonna power draw this off the top or uh, power follow. Good shot Excellent there from shot. Eric, showing why he is a six hundred here. And he had a much easier eight ball on the last one that was unsuccessful. Let's see if he can cash in on this one. He does. Makes it two to one, and this this is quick action over here. And this is a three thirty. This is a three thirty match getting started. They started at like three fifteen, and it's already, you know, they're already oh. three racks into it. Yeah, they're starting early today. Yeah, nice. well, I, I guess good. you know the players can if nobody's on their table and they're both ready, they can start early. So we didn't get the stream started until they were halfway through the second rack. So 
Okay, um, yeah. They didn't realize that it was a streaming table because we didn't know that we were waiting for the three thirty match to you know three thirty mark to start, but no problem. And we are in beautiful Lincoln City, Oregon on a sunny 60 degree day at the beach. But you know what? We're all inside this building. It's As we all are. It's beautiful sunny weather. <laughs> There's waves crashing around on the beach and birds are in the you know flying around and but we love this game so much that we are willing to be in, in inside on a beautiful day like this. Uh, but you know, 60 degrees it's still a little bit chilly. Uh, when you get out there on the beach, it's kind of windy and you still have to have a coat on. You know? Yeah, it's that ocean breeze that comes in, right? Yeah. It really likes to chill. I'm sorry, Paul. I said 60 degrees, but you are a Canadian, so I must say, uh, what, six, 15 degrees. Uh, yeah, about there. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, so I got I to gotta speak. Um, I got to translate for him. Translate to Canadian. <laughs> And for those who didn't win, do not forget to swipe your winner's circle card every day. It's located over by the Evo Sports area in the main entry door. Swipe your winner's circle card daily, please. All right. So after the break here, what's he got? He's got the three ball. That's long distance. That's about it. Yep. Yeah. He wants to set up. He's going to have the three and then the seven. So he's got to have a successful shot here on the three. He does. Nice job stunning that cue ball. One thing about Ben is he's got a good stroke. He likes to stroke the ball and he likes to move the ball. He plays with a lot of power. He doesn't like to slow roll anything. None of us do, though. He likes to get his full stroke. That's when he's most accurate is when he's getting that full stroke going. I need Stacy Moses to the tournament desk, please. Stacy Moses to the tournament desk. Okay, going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, he's, oh, you know, he had to get that seven out of trouble. You know, that was that was key. But you know, the the challenge with that is, what do you set up for on your next ball after the seven? And he did not get set up on anything here. So, no, it's all tied up. Yeah, he's got absolutely nothing. I do think that maybe you've got a safety down here to play, right? He comes off yeah. this ball, and he's got, he's looking at it right now, actually, and then bring the cue ball, you know, off off of that ball and off the rail. It's gonna bring the it's gonna bring the five ball down in this area, so you've got a good chance of sticking it behind the five if you play that shot right, right? You can, but it's a lot of distance, and you got to hit it just with the right pace. But that cue ball can come off the rail and back into the five ball. Yeah. Right. You're, you're moving the five and the cue ball to the same area. You're and you're hoping they just kind of get lodged together. But that's what I like. Uh, he's he's looking at something else. I think he's going to try to combo the five in with the two. Maybe. Let's see. Nope. Just getting just a, a brush just of get, one. Yeah. Just getting stuff out. He does. Uh, he does create some problems for the fourteen ball. All right, so Eric at the table now with stripes. Well, even a problem for himself. He, I don't know if either either one of those balls are accessible. The uh, the one out of five. Yeah, yeah, potentially, but I don't think he was too too worried about creating a problem yeah. for himself because he just needed to make sure that he gets back to the table at that point because he had absolutely nothing. Oh, this is. Uh oh, that's gonna scratch, and he makes the shot, and he lines oh, up the. He might have. He might have wired yeah. up those balls. Not quite. I don't think. I don't think the ball. They're not wired to go. They're definitely not wired to go to the pocket. So, uh, Ben might elect to play a safety here. He can certainly just punt the one ball out of there and freeze the cue ball to the backside of the five. Leave the cue ball exactly where the one is right now. 
Uh, I like that shot. Uh, ben is a very offensive-minded player. He likes to he likes to go for the runouts, and so he, he's not he's not taking my safety. And I don't I didn't expect him to honestly. He he likes to play offense, and he's good at it. He's a shot maker. Uh oh, that didn't work. But he he ends up getting wow. he ends up getting the safety right. Uh, so and creates more problems for the table. Now we got a 10-6 issue. And um, the loser of this match will play at 5.30 against yours truly. Oh. Yeah, so I get I get to play one of these gentlemen. So that's why I figured I might as well commentate yeah. this because I can watch it and yeah, see. scouting reports. Yeah, get, get a, a scouting report on and see uh, who am I going to be facing and what am I going to be looking at. So what happened there? I, I didn't even see the the shot there. He came off the rail in, into the two balls. And he pocketed something? He must have because he's at the seal of the table. So I, I, I missed that. Okay. I'm talking about myself. I had a really tough match this morning. My first opponent was the former champion of the Platinum Division, Joel Peck. Uh, so I had to play the defending champ right off the bat. Uh, he got me 6-3, but, um, you know, I put up a decent fight. I played I played decent. You know, I, there was a couple of shots I would like to have back, as always. Uh, but that's just how it goes. I got to play better. If I want to win Platinum, I got to play a lot better. I'm coming in at the bottom of the kind of the bottom end of the platinum platinum this year is 560 to 624 okay and i'm a 579 so i guess not quite at the bottom and you said eric is a 600 602, a 602. out of vancouver washington yeah okay he probably plays at the Silver Star, I'm guessing. That's the one of the main pool halls there in um, in Vancouver, Washington. I hear lots of great things, but I haven't actually been there yet. I'd like to get in there. I'd like to talk to the Silver Star about getting some uh, Evo Sports live stream systems set up in there for them because it sounds like they've got a great a great venue and probably be a good place to have this system set up so if anybody out there from the silver star in vancouver is listening you guys would like to get the evo sports live stream system set up for the players to use it's a fantastic system plug and play we set everything up and players just start and stop matches whenever they want nobody needs to run the stream nobody has to have any technical knowledge it's as easy as one two three abc Enter player name, enter race length, and start stream. That's all you got to do. All right, so what's going to happen here for Ben? He's moving that cue ball quite a bit there, and he's looking at the five, but it doesn't have a home And by that 14, I don't believe. Now, from the angle I can see on the, on the table, I, it, it doesn't might. go past... Oh, he, oh, he's looking at it. Actually, you know what? I think it's got. I think it's got some of that enough of the pocket to go, but you don't have to pocket it there. Oh, okay, I see now. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You don't have to. You can choose. You can find a way to get into another pocket here because he's got two balls to sit, get shape on it with. So he's going to try that six ball and see where he can get position. And it's kind of a funny angle on the six that's going to draw the cue, bring the cue ball towards that corner over there and he's gonna have to draw it away from the, the scratch tangent line tangent line coming off the six takes it you know in this area so he's gonna have to put draw on it to bring it here and he did and he sets up for the five he's gonna have that half a pocket and see what he can do he did get down and look at that first to make sure that it's it's there 
Now, the problem here when you have a half a pocket is you don't want to hammer it in there because if it, you know, touches that little point at, with some speed, it's not going to go in the pocket. You want to roll it in, but rolling it in doesn't really get you great shape on the, Yeah, it doesn't get you the best shape on the four ball, but you know, here he's going to kind of made it work. Yeah. He's making the most of what he has here. A smart move to just roll it in. Uh, that's, that's what he had to work with, but now he's got to get from the four to the eight and he's going to have to draw. He's going to have to hit it to the corner and put some, put some draw on this ball. Try not to scratch. You don't put enough draw and you could scratch in this corner down here. Yeah. So you got to watch that. And I'm going to go. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go straight draw on this shot. That's that's where I'm going on the cue ball right there. I think he agrees. That's about that's about where I would go to. Looks he look he looks like he agrees here. Oh, he did. He let up on the stroke. So you know he knows it too. He decelerated on his follow through, and when you decelerate on your follow through, bad things happen always. Uh, but he's just, I think he was just so aware of that potential to scratch. Uh, yeah, it almost, it almost, it almost looked like a miscue, but, but I think, I think you're right where he kind of slowed down. He slowed down almost like he second guessed at the last second, you know, and almost yeah. tried to hold up a little bit, you know? Uh, so guilty of doing that too many times. Yeah. Never, never, never decelerate on your follow through. There is never a good thing that will happen from that. Uh, but he, he knows it. And that's frustrating when it happens. But luckily for Ben, it's still a brand new ball game. Instead of a race to six, now we've got a race to four. And here we go. I like the pace that these guys play at. It's fun to watch when they're, they're just not yeah, you faster. Know, right? Yeah, they are just on it one shot after the next. Not really. There's not a lot of, you know, from yesterday watching the Scotch doubles, it's very slow pace, right? Because you have conferences. They have to make sure that they're on the same page, that they have the same plan in mind, right? So there's constant yep. communication going on. Singles isn't like that. You know, you know, you know what you're doing. And so once you have your plan set in your mind, you just go to work. And so singles take half as much time as scotch doubles just because of that fact. You don't have to worry about another, another person like uh, leaving, leaving them bad, right? Right. If you leave yourself a bad shot, well, it's, it's your own fault, right? That's right. You can't, you can't get mad at anybody but yourself. <laughs> yeah. And they did move uh, a couple of the Q repair uh, people down closer to us over here in the corner. So if you guys hear that kind of humming sound or buzzing sound, it's not my microphone. It's the lathe that's going over there that is doing some tip repair. So it just it is what it is. So Eric with a scratch on the break, leaving a fairly wide open table here. And what do we have? We've got a little bit of a problem here with the uh, the 13 and 3. So you got to address that first. And I'm going to be looking right away to see if that 3 ball plays in the side. And if it does, that's where I'm starting with. I'm going solids and I'm starting with the 3 ball. That's a very, very, very tough to see. Yeah, it's, it's impossible for us to see because, you know, the, the angle. Uh, but Ben is going to start with... The six. Mm. I so, guess the three goes into that corner as well. The three might not Get play. Out. Maybe he was thinking he could break it out. I don't know. Uh, or, oh, like you said, maybe it does go into this corner down here. You're right. So if it if it plays down here, yeah, that's probably what he was trying to do. Good call. He just overran his position then if that's the case. Yeah. This allows the four ball to into the side to keep down in this area. Mm -hmm. Possibly come off the two rails and back out for the three. Uh, make it 
Oh, we have to be candid for the for the photo. <laughs> Justin's over here taking selfies of us. I guess it's not a selfie if you're taking a picture of somebody else. It's a themmy, not a selfie. I think he's sending that out to somebody. Probably. <laughs> so here's where he is taking a little bit of time. I jinxed it by saying that... Uh, the pace is fast, but this one you do have to really think about because it's a thin cut. Yeah, not easy shot there. Good lead. Yeah, that Covers worked almost out. every ball. Yeah, that worked out really well. He blocked him. Oh, look at this. He's just going to get right down and go for this kick shot. Kick safe. Wow, so nice shoot. You know, and he did not even take but 10 seconds to figure that out, and he hits it pretty good. I'd say perfect. So I don't know if he can see the five ball. Past the 12. The 5 and the 15 are yeah. here? Is that what you're talking about? The 5 yeah. past the 15 you're talking about? Yeah. I believe it does go. My expert opinion on reading these camera angles is that that does go. But I've been known to be wrong. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Scary. Okay, that worked out fairly well for Ben. Not leaving any good offensive opportunities here. Let's see what Eric can come up with on the defensive side of things. Just bringing that cue ball to the bottom rail. Moving the 10 up. Yeah, where all the balls are kind of the way they're positioned, it seems like it's almost easy for them to, to get some hooks on each other. Right. To, to, leave, to leave them safe. And you know what I'm really confused about in this rack right here? The thing that confuses me the most is that that template has been empty for the whole game, but yet nobody wants to pick it up. Why would you not get that thing off the table? You know, because it affects the rolls of the ball. When it, the balls go over it slowly, yeah. they, they move around, especially that paper one. It's a little thicker. So I guess they just don't care. But I don't like it. Me personally, I'm getting that thing out of there as soon as possible. I tend to like not notice that it's there until I have to do like put something on the cue ball and I'm going to be going over top of it. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, that's good. That means you're focused on the game. For me, I, my eye goes to it. And it's like a distraction. It's like what? That's there's a weird object in the in the table that I'm not used. To, it's not supposed to be there, and it distracts me a little bit. So good on you for not even paying attention to it. So Ben, with a, a no rail foul. I believe that's yeah. Yep, no rail. There we go. There we go. Thank you. We heard you. Maybe he's listening. Yeah. Maybe he's got the closed caption on the yeah. <laughs> on there. He said, oh, I better get that off of there. All right, so ball in hand here. We're going to find out if the 13 plays. I don't think it does. Otherwise, Eric would have shot it already because he doesn't take much time. So he he's going to just get right down to work. So he's going to break out the 13 right here with the 10. Play the 10 in the corner. Stun into the, thir the 3. And you should have shape 
Okay. Ah, he didn't. He came off the top oh. side of the three ball. I think he really wanted to come kind of full into the back side of that three, get things nudged up. So that did not work as he wanted. He's got it all broke out and really no shape on a ball. So he's going to tie something back up again. Yeah. <laughs> so he breaks it out and then intentionally ties it back up. It's like, you know, open the door, close the door. Open the door, close the door. Okay. I just want to make sure. Oh, looks like our thing froze here. So Ben with a, a pretty good shot, not selling out too much there. All right, we're back on with the commentary here. Fixed our audio issue. I have to restart my computer every time. Okay, no, because we, last night after we went to sleep, after that, me and Colin was up for another hour trying to fix the new server, the new turn server. So, okay. yeah, let me know whenever it restarts so I can at least okay, keep I track of how many times it's doing. It just did that once. Okay, looks like we're. Uh, Taking a player break here. Uh, player break. So uh, we'll be right back with you guys in a, in a couple minutes when they uh, resume the action.
Okay, looks like we're back. Just a quick player break. Hmm. Okay, a miss from each player there after that break. And it's uh, both players really trying to get settled in here. Neither one of them is dialed in yet. Good shot from Ben, using his opponent's ball to carry him off of it. I'm not sure I want to take the five. I'm not sure I want to take the seven right now. I'm thinking I'm going to take the five or the two. What's he going to do? He's going to get his extension out. So I really don't like the, the, the seven right now. I, I think that the angle that you have on the seven and the reach, it doesn't allow for the easiest position here. I think it's fine to use that as a last ball to get set up on the eight for, but you know, he wants to get it out of there. Now you're also giving up that pocket for the opponent. If you don't get out, you're leaving it wide open for them. So Ben is betting that he is going to get out from this rack. Uh, but I really like hitting the five ball, the five ball right here. Getting down there for the one and the two. Maybe play the seven last and then the eight. But he's got his extension on his cue, so he's committing to this shot. Trying to slow down the cue ball. Pounding his hand against the table to slow that cue ball down. Uh, he has to take the five now because this is, well, he doesn't have to, I guess. He could take the one, and then the five does play down to the bottom left corner if he likes that later. He could play the five down here. I believe it's got room. He's looking at it to see if it does. But there, you know, I, I honestly don't mind getting it because it's it's the ball that's kind of the most troublesome of the three. Just go ahead and put it in the side. Come back out for the one. Pretty easy duck, duck, goose here. Okay, he's got a bit more angle on this eight ball than he wants, so he just wants to use the 13 as the stopper for the cue ball here. As long as you as long as you collide with the thirteen, nothing bad's gonna happen to you. Oh no. He did not collide with the thirteen. He missed the thirteen. He needed to hit that a little fuller and with some draw to come into the thirteen and, and not scratch on that one. So that rack is gonna go to Eric. 
Uh, and Ben giving away a couple of wins here. I believe the score should be much different um, based on just a couple of late game errors. But uh, I think this is that they've really the errors have gone on both sides. So you can't really say one one player should be where they are or not. Uh, they both had mistakes. And uh, but it's still a close match. It's a race to six, three to two. Anybody's game still. Still time to clear things up. All right, Renteria to break. Going a little off center, head ball break. Here we go. Cue ball moves straight backwards off the rack. Two ball does not drop. So that is a dry break. And Eric's going to make his way to the table to get started here. He's got several options for starter balls, so he can take his choice of what he wants to do here. For solids, he has an option on the, the one or the five as very easy starter balls. He wants to take the rack off the table. A little bit of teamwork there to get the rack off. And uh, this is, you know, for stripes, the problem is this 15-8. So, and for solids, the problem is the three ball, I believe. But he's going to take solids. Oh, the three ball's not a problem. Never mind. Solids doesn't have any problems, really. It's a high likelihood of seeing a run out here. See what he wants to do here. Draw shot. Did not get any draw off that ball. I think he wanted to draw out for the three next. He could choose the six here or back cut the four into the side. See what he likes. It's not a bad choice to take the six because it does bring your cue ball back out to center table. Playing the six here brings cue ball off this rail and can kind of come straight back up. Just a little bit of top, maybe just a touch of inside. I don't like the four ball here because your position is going to be a little bit tricky. You're going to have to go around some, some obstacles. You're going to have to go around some obstacles and you could get stuck somewhere, right? That's why I didn't like the four there. I think you could have gotten an easier shape on the four off of the three. So the three ball is now a problem. He's moved the nine into the path of the three. So the three doesn't play really anywhere, but except for... <laughs> The three only plays up here. That's that's the only pocket that that, that ball has without moving it somewhere. So, uh, but no matter. Missing that shot and getting extremely fortunate. Uh, I think Ben's just going to have to play the little ticky safety here. If you got that real delicate, slow, short stroke where you can just move the cue ball an inch and a half off the edge of the nine and into the rail just right in here and you want to squeeze your cue ball right in there after you glance the nine but that is a very touchy touchy shot you have to have an extremely delicate stroke uh, but in my opinion that that's what he's got he doesn't have any offensive opportunity and i don't see any other safety possibility here He's going to have to execute that delicate little ticky shot. <laughs> Unless he's, he's kind of thinking about kicking the nine in the side. I guess that is an offensive shot. You know, he could come off the rail, come into the nine and try to, you know, hammer that nine into the side pocket. It's there. 
It's it's not a high percentage, that's for sure. And you're moving it out of the path of the three ball, so you are selling out the table. If you miss that shot, he's going to have the six. He's going to have the and be able to get to the one and have the three. So he's got he'll have a good chance of getting out if you miss this shot. If you do go for the the kick on the side. So uh, Ben talking to Eric. Not sure if they want to have a ref come watch this, but I think that it's going to be. And we're not going to get to watch it, but I'll see, I'm watching from the I'm watching the actual table. He's going to be blocking our camera view, so I'll tell you guys what happens here. Okay, so Ben getting down. He's thinking about playing it. He just doesn't like that delicate little ticky shot. It requires such a slow, small, little, tiny baby stroke. Very easy to overhit this. Very easy to not hit it at all. Yeah, that's very touchy. So he moved it. He moved the ball up a bit, and it was a good hit. Just sold out the six ball. And he moved the nine out of the way of the three. So the three now does have this pocket down here to play. Two. So Eric looking at where he wants to be to get shape on the three ball. That's the most important thing. And he can't forget about this one sitting down here. He doesn't want to forget about that. That might be his key ball to get to the eight. Not the easiest key ball to have, but it's just what he's got. Okay, so... Just bumping the three out of there, and now he's going to play the 3-1 combo. You've got to be careful not to pocket both balls here. You want to hit this nice and soft and just leave the three where the one is. Excellent shot right there. Great shot by Eric. And now the real hard shot comes in. He has to get right in. He wants to get right in this area here with the cue ball. That's the prime position. Let's let's see how close he can get to my circle. I know that's where he wants it. Not bad. He's in that line. Not a bad shot there. Well played from Eric. Giving himself an opportunity to close it out. I'll close out the rack anyway, and he does. Four to three in favor of Eric. So Ben had an unsuccessful safety on that nine ball, and he definitely took a lot of time figure, trying to think about it, but those delicate little shots are really hard to do. And he hit it about four times harder than he wanted to. Okay, now Eric to break. Also going with the head ball break, just like his opponent. And there goes the eight ball, spotted up. I don't, I don't think he's going to choose to re-rack here, but he gets the option to re-rack or spot the eight and continue shooting. In BCA, the eight ball is not a win or a loss on the break. You cannot win or lose the game on the break in BCA. 
So spots up the eight and says, let's go to work. I like solids. So does Eric. It's a little bit of a surgical rack here. You, you've got them all in the area and they're all, they all have pockets, but you know, you have to be very careful with your position on all these shots. You don't want to get on the wrong side of a ball here because you, you don't want to start colliding into anything. This is the kind of rack where you just want to try to stay away from bumping into balls as much as possible because they all are open, but it will only take one little misstep to tie up something to another ball. And that might have been a little bit of a misstep here. Oh, he's got the three. Okay. Yeah, I like this. Three. And then the two or four you've got. Yeah, I like four. Yeah, four, five. One, two, eight. That's that's my pattern. Four to the five. Then the one goes there. Cue ball here. You've got the two ball going there. And your position on the eight is going to be right here. So I'm drawing that all up for you. But that's what, that's what I see. I like four, five, one, two, eight. That seems like the easiest pattern to me. So I think the four ball, you want to just roll forward about an inch or stun follow an inch. Yep, just like that. Good shot. He's got a little bit of an angle on the five. He might have to go down to the bottom rail and come back out with it. And he does. And I think he's going to change the pattern here. I think he's going to go 2-1-8 now, just because that's what he's left himself with. don't know if that was maybe his original plan or not, but no matter. It's a nice-looking pattern. And the only thing he has to watch out for is to make sure that he avoids this 11 ball at all costs with the cue ball, because he is going to put some top right on this ball. Going to put some top right, and he wants to be in this area with the cue ball. You got to avoid the eleven. Okay, <laughs> that was a close. You know, if he, if he bumps the eleven in the, you know, in that wrong spot, it becomes a blocker for him. So he was able to get around it, and that worked out fairly nicely. Welcome back, Paul Comte, to the booth. Thank you. All right, so we're watching Eric Sumkill. Go on a little bit of a, a run here. I believe that was a break and run. It was. Uh, no, it was a dry break. Sorry. I think that might have been a dry break from. No, it was a break and run. Yeah. So it's five two now. Yeah. So uh, in the, the in the previous rack, uh, Ben had a safety that he just overhit, and Eric had a really nice out and closed out the rack. And then Eric broke and ran after that. Oh. Uh, so Ben's been sitting for a little while, and now his opponent's on the hill. It's going to be a tough, tough comeback for him now. Um, the match is kind of getting away from Ben real quick here. Legal box. Assortment of cues, cases, and other billiards supplies, and Chandler Carroll. Save your shipping costs by purchasing the gear. Visit Western BCA booth for this year's eight ball events here, such as sweatshirts, hoodies, and shirts. Check out the patch for this year's eight ball event. So, Ben going to the side break. He was breaking center earlier, but wasn't successful for him. So, you see that a lot in this tournament. You know, the two options for breaking eight ball, bar box eight ball, is one is head on, you know, hitting the head ball, and the other is hitting the second ball. The, the last couple of breaks I saw him do, he was going to the head ball, and he was not having success. So you see that a lot when they'll change it up, right? It's not, if yeah. it's not working, you change it up, right? Yeah, have a, have a couple of break, different breaks in the repertoire, right? You have to be You have to know how to do both effectively, so... You know, when just one's not working, just change it up. And sometimes yeah. every, the other one works great. 
And sometimes nothing works, but you got to try. Yeah, because I think as as players, as their skill level grows, you realize more and more how important the break is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the the higher you go in skill level, the more important the break is. Yeah, right. Uh, there's not you know not a lot of the players in the bronze division or silver you know will be running out after the break right but in platinum or elite you know certainly they're yes. you know you dry break and you're going to have a lot you're going to be in the b side and you're going to be out of the tournament pretty quick if you're dry break yeah just not very forgiving brackets yeah and from talking with players who... so we got a we got a ref to watch this shot i uh, just yeah this is pretty close yeah i think it's just he just wants to make sure he doesn't double hit it. Missed the ball. So. Yeah, because once you get to a certain level where, where anybody can can run out, the break becomes incredibly important. Oh yeah. If you're making balls on the break, you're still mm -hmm. at the table. If you're dry breaking, well. Right. Well, that's sort of uh, one of the uh, reasons that a lot of, um, you know, higher level players will do that second ball break. It is because for one, it's easier to pocket a ball. And for two, you tend to get more clusters. So if you do dry break, it's not an automatic loss. A lot of times the, they still have to work through some problems. Yeah. Oh, you see that? It, yeah, hit the, yeah. it hit the template rack and it bounced out. Just what we were discussing. It earlier. was actually a favorable roll for him because it would have been rolling right into the, the three ball. It dramatically changed the path of the cue ball. And I do not like that <laughs> template rack on the table, but I, I get it. You know, in that situation, it was pretty hard to remove it. It looks like the three is sitting right on it. The other and the 14, I believe, is just off of yeah, just off of it. It's kind of hard to tell. That this one has some wing, the wings on it, so it, it might be sitting on that wing on the bottom. But yeah. at, at any rate, you know, I just I love template racks because they do make the brakes much more effect, effective and efficient um, at getting a tight rack. But yeah, they're. You just want to get them off the table, and you can always call a ref to. Oh, oh, that was. A... Oh, and he almost made the eight ball there. Whew. Well, guess what? He gets to take the rack off the table now. Yeah. I'm getting this thing out of here. So, is there a rule? You see where they put the uh, put the template on the side? Yeah. If it were to be, like, if they misplaced it and it was kind of leaning over. And, and they were to shoot a ball, and a ball were to roll and hit it, would hmm. that be some sort of interference foul or something? Uh, that's a good question, but who would it be a foul on? I guess it would depend on, yeah. I don't really know. That's that's a good question. In fact, Sam Robito, Sam Robito's over here. That's a good question to ask a ref, because Sam would probably know the answer. I'm going to ask Sam. Hey, Sam, if a template rack is leaning over the side of the table and a ball rolls past it, and it interferes with that ball's path. Is that an interference foul of some sort? It is a foul. Who's it a foul on? The player that's shooting because they left it because they shot with it on the table? Yeah, I, I could okay. see that because you would have okay. to be aware. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. Okay. I've never seen it before, but it was an interesting question. Okay. Hmm. Thanks. I knew Sam yeah. would know the answer. He's, he's got all the answers. Thanks, Sam. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Legendary Sam Robito in the house, helping us out with the ref decision. You know, that's, this is the great thing about Lincoln City. You know, you just, somebody will walk by, uh, there, there's, there's a guy that knows I know, right yeah. there. I know him. He's well, you happen to have good timing with that question. Yeah, because I guess, Sam, right? Sam Robito has uh, been refing this game for a lot, a lot of years. And he's Reft a lot of pro matches. He said he actually saw it happen one time at a pro event, and they didn't call it. 
they didn't call a, an interference foul on it, but yeah. Oh, maybe I've never seen it called. Maybe the ball, like it was a, it was irrelevant. The ball rubbing it, maybe it was just the ball that was rolling. And uh, we'll be right back with some more commentary. We just got to fix a, a quick audio issue. We'll be right back. All right, we got that. We got our little microphone issue fixed. We're back on. Nice shot from Ben to break out that ball, and I think his twelve is still shootable, so that works out pretty good. You guys are good now. You guys don't even have to push in. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I get that. The 12 ball. So Ben Renteria here trying to fight off his opponent being on the hill. He's trying to stay alive. Four balls left to stay alive for another rack. I like it. A little stun, nice. stun over. Now, what do you do here? You got your choice of going outside and going two rails with for position, or you want to go inside and check it up. You know, outside's going to take take you this way. Inside's okay. going to check it straight up, right? Yeah. Which which would you choose in that situation? I would probably just go straight into the rail and back up. I think it's it's safe. So inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good shot from Ben. He's going to close this rack out. As long as he doesn't do anything crazy here, like scratch down in the corner or something, I highly doubt that's going to happen. But I don't want to. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> there you go, Ben closing out the rack. Five three, and it is five to three. We got action. And if you guys haven't yet, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Evo Sports Streaming. So where you're watching this right now, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. So you'll get notified when we go live on each stream. And it's you, if you're on our channel, on the Evo Sports channel, check out the playlist section and go to WBCA 2024. And that's going to have all the videos cataloged. All of the matches that you have seen that have been streamed here in Lincoln City on the stream tables are all going to be cataloged into that playlist WBCA 2024 inside the Evo Sports channel on YouTube. So we're trying to keep it organized so that you can easily find stuff. Another uh, helpful hint is when you're on the Evo Sports YouTube channel, you can search by last name of the player that you want to find and that should pull up the video as well. You know, a lot of people come and they say, oh, how do I find my friend's video? 
Yep, just on our channel on YouTube. Make sure you just type in their name, and you should be able to find them. Okay, so... Open table after the break here. Doesn't like solids because of the little cluster over there on the left side. The three and five are kind of stuck together. So Ben wants to take stripes and he <laughs> he gets a fortunate. He gets didn't a hit, Yeah, he didn't really hit that too clean, but it worked out for him. So, um, you know, the, the challenge here is these, you know, these balls down here is going to be the most challenging part of this rack. However, you know, this combo plays pretty nicely. Right? It so looks like it's wired almost. It, it's yeah. not quite wired, but it's it's a pretty easy combo for players of this skill level, of their skill level. So, you know, I I mean, I kind of like, you know, 14, 9, and then just float down here for that nice, easy combo position. Yeah. Because if you get into this mm -hmm. position right here, you can you can hit this and just bump into and kind of stun into the 15, and your 15 will be a nice, easy next ball for you. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm... That's what I'm looking for there.
We just got to reset our mics. We'll be right back. All right, got that fixed. We're back on. So Ben, with an opportunity to take this thing to Hill Hill, just needs to get a good clean out here. Got some balls to work through. Yeah, they're all in open positions. The eight ball looks like it squeezes into that side pocket. It does. The eight ball does play in the side. So you might want to save the three as your key ball, really. As the last yeah, as the last ball. Yeah. As long as you have a ball that gets you shape on the three, mm -hmm. you know, because it your your shape is kind of limited. You want to be you know, pretty much right in here somewhere for shape on the three, so it's not a huge area to, to be in. Uh, now your shape is going to be even smaller to get on the three. So this is a this is a big problem here. This is a big problem. If you're gonna if you're gonna decide to bail out and play safe, you do it right now. You play the little dinky sh safety shot here. You play the little dinky safety shot. Leave the cue ball on the rail. But again, it's very touchy. The worst case scenario is that three rolls up to the eight and it opens it opens you up for a shot on the on the ten, but it'll be a difficult shot. Just a nice little dinky shot here to play safe. Try to get yourself ball in hand. I don't know. I mean if you if you shoot the one here, your your safety opportunities go away real quick. You're going to have to figure out the offensive out if you take that one ball. But it looks like Ben has a plan. A man with a plan. Got that nice and soft. Left it there to make the four ball yeah, easier. He might, he might try to draw into this 15-8. You know, it's, it's possible. You know, he... Hit this ball, try to draw into this rail, and come into this and try to open those up. It's a bit risky because you could easily scratch, right? If you get too much draw, you're going to come off this eight, and you're going to go right into the drink. You need to hit this. You need to hit this rail right here, right? Let's see what he's got. Maybe he's not going to go for that either. Maybe he's not going for the breakout. He's not. He's going to try to set up on the three ball, and I think he's got. I think he's Brilliant. got as good as he can ask for. If it's there. Yeah, I was going to say if if he gets shape off for the three off that ball to take it because yeah, it's gonna it's just going to get tougher. Absolutely. Now, if he doesn't have shape on the three, he could play a draw shot here with yeah just straight draw and bring that cue ball right up into this area right so you're gonna mm. you're gonna bank that three ball down somewhere in here and leave the cue frozen to the eight that is a shot here that is an opportunity to do that well, looks like you might have, like you might have but if it, available but it, shot though. yeah if he's got the shot he should take it Karen? right 
Nice. And it goes Excellent in. Shot. No problem. Yeah, he pumps his fist. He knows he's got the game now. And he's coming back full in full force here. Try to take this thing down. Going to leave it down to a race to one. Yeah. Yes. All right, you just got to get oh, he called it to the corner. He did. I guess. I guess yeah, it looked like looked like he tapped out oh. that top corner there. Oh, okay. I didn't oh. think it went past. Well, the maybe maybe it doesn't go to the side. Maybe that maybe yeah. the the camera is a little bit of an optical illusion. Uh, I thought I was thinking side was the best way to go, but boy, that corner looks like it's really tight to get by the fifteen. Yeah, he might have to rub the side rail. You might have to rub the side rail on the way down. Freeze. Yep. And we're going to see what he's got here. He's calling corner. To take it to Hill Hill. He's really gonna oh, take. Still, yeah. He's really he's, taking his time with this one. This is really a pretty important sure. shot. Pretty important shot here. No problem. Makes it. We got Hill Hill. Excellent. We'll be back in a sec. All right, so Eric to break the hill, hill rack. And here we go for all the marbles. And there they go. Ball in on the break. Uh, we got a little cluster here with the 10-14. So because of that, I'm taking solids here. Just because of that. Immediately identify the problem and... I am taking solids because it looks like the three ball plays in either corner. After the four ball goes, it plays in either corner. Top left or, or bottom, or I mean bottom left or top right. So that's not really an issue. The five ball might be a little tricky to get on. Yeah. All right, Justin Lee bringing the coffee. So, Okay, so Eric, Eric really taking his time here. Yeah. He's going to 
decide to take the one ball first. And then use the four to loosen up the five. I kind of like this pattern. This is now if there's a shot where he's he is likely to get in trouble, it's this one. Because if this does not play perfectly, you could end up on the you could end up rail. with nothing. You could end up yeah. with nothing to shoot at, and that's what happened. He's got really nothing to shoot at. I believe the only offensive shot he has would be to cut the five ball now in the side pocket. A very difficult shot to execute. You know, I mean, it goes here, right? I mean, <laughs> you're going to have to really cut that thing in. But I don't want to. Nobody wants to take that shot. Uh, but what else? What else do you have here? I mean, do you have any defensive opportunity? Can you see that two that's on the side rail just above the side pocket? I don't know. That's yeah, good. It's... That's a good point. Let me draw my let me he, draw my little straight line to it. And you he hasn't looked at it, so I, you, I'm assuming maybe you, you tell can't me. See you it. think that you think that five might be in the way of that? I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I think he's going to be playing safe here. Okay, not a bad idea because Stripes has this problem, and they also oh, oh I thought he was going to unlock them. I thought he was going to unlock out. those balls, but he, Stripes also has the problem down in this area here, right? So you've got a, a couple of issues with Stripes. So Ben is in a a tough spot, even though he's back up to the table, he's in a tough spot. Yeah, I was checking out our ta our stream on table one. Fellow Canadian Don Davidson is down 5-3 to Stephen Lingelbach. Yeah, Steve Lingelbach is the, a great player. And the elite singles mm -hmm. race to seven. And what's Don Davidson's Fargo? Is he right around a 650-ish? 640, I 640? believe. 640? Okay. Yeah, and Steve Lingelbach has been around the game for many, many years. Played many pros. 645? 650. 650. Don Davidson. So if you guys are want to see an elite singles match and want to jump over to that on the Evo Sports YouTube channel, it's going on right now. It's 5-3 uh, Steve Lingelbach over Don Davidson. That is the elite singles. What did Don Davidson's uh, Calcutta go for? Do you know? I don't know, but I know Stan bought it. <laughs> Stan bought it. Okay. Well, you got to support your fellow Canadians, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, Stan.